So it's likely you've heard about topping your onions, but is it worth topping onions or should you even do it at all? Well, most universities agree that removing approximately four centimeters from the surface after they germinate can help with some initial root development and that the general recommendations of one inch or 1.5 inches is excessive and continual topping actually can become detrimental to the bulb. So we're gonna go over the science of what's going on when we top and whether or not it's worth your time to top said onions as well as ways you can actually increase bulb growth or development based on university studies. For those of you that don't know what topping onions means, it typically means just removing of this top portion of your seedling and the general recommendation is to remove a lot of this. However, universities say four centimeters is more than enough and just one application rather than repeatedly going in and removing those lengths. I'm not going to argue because they are delicious. They are delicious. The theory made up by gardeners is when we top our onions, we are redirecting the plant brain to developing more root and bulb than upper biomass. And while this seems logical, the truth is that it's actually having the opposite effect. The leaves or stems, as some people like to call them, of onions are used for photosynthesis. The more photosynthetic biomass we have above ground, the more photosynthesis taking place, and therefore the more glucose or sugars that are being released into the plant. What builds a bulb, whether it's a tulip or of a tuber type plant like turmeric or ginger or onion has to do with sugars. The more sugars present in the plant, the bigger that bulb becomes. And this is actually down to a science. We know that if we can measure the biomass above ground on an onion, both in length and total number of leaves, we can actually give a rough estimate on what the bulb size can be. And onion growers on a large scale will actually utilize this to determine when it's time to harvest or break the stems before harvesting to allow that dry out process. So don't top throughout the season and top sparingly before you go to transplant outdoors. Now, one thing that can be noted is that when we top before transplanting, we typically find the plants more manageable to deal with and therefore easier to plant. And that's why many will top in that initial transplant phase because no one likes to pot up or transplant up very floppy plants. So what factors do affect bulb size and how can we increase the bulb size of our onions if we can't rely on the old wise tale of topping or or removing that biomass throughout the season. So the first thing you can do is actually start from seed. I've talked about this many times over, but seeds versus sets, seeds are always superior when it comes to better bulb formation. Next up is actually transplanting outdoors while it's still relatively cool. These onion plants typically like a cooler soil to be able to form the bulb, similar to tulips in this way. If we're able to get our onions outdoors earlier and while that soil is still relatively cool, we tend to see more bulb bulb formation. As the soil begins to heat up, the bulb formation begins to slow down. So the more time you have in a cooler soil, the better. So that means get your transplants out as early as possible and cover if needed when there is a frost. One study I looked at shockingly showed a massive increase in bulb formation when nitrogen was applied. The reason for this is because nitrogen immediately affected the upper biomass present on the plant. The more nitrogen present in the soil, the more biomass we tend to see and therefore more leaves we tend to see, more photosynthesis and ultimately bigger bulbs because more sugar. So in particular, an application of calcium nitrate was the best method for developing bulbs, but any form of nitrogen will work. The other fertilizer is actually sulfur. Sulfur is not only known for giving it its pungent taste in onions, but also helping with bulb formation. Now this classically speaking can be lacking in some soils. So the addition of sulfur through either synthetic or organic fertilizers is going to be very important in an environment where you are growing onions or any sort of allium actually, garlic included. Next up is removing weeds. Now, onions really hate competition and the best way to remove that competition is to weed it out. Make sure you don't intercrop onions and make sure you give them enough space to allow for bulb development. This means removing anything that is not an onion that's meant to be in that place whenever possible. I like to weed my onions weekly to help remove that competition and you'd be very shocked 
by the results of this. Next up is when you go to transplant them outdoors, don't plant them too deep. It's very typical for these plants to look a little floppy when you transplant them outdoors. And that's particularly true if you're not topping them. So don't stress out about the floppiness, take a breath and actually plant them at the depth they're meant to be transplanted at. I can do a video when that time comes for me to transplant outdoors. Ultimately, a bulb that's closer to the surface tends to do best because it's not as restricted by the surrounding soil. Next tip is loose soil. Now there's different methods to achieve this from tillage or double dig or a broad fork method if you're interested in a no-till, low-till, even though that's debatable in the soil science world if that would be considered that but I digress. This is the best way to allow for bulb formation. Now, after the bulb is planted, obviously you want to limit your root disruption. The next best method for allowing for bulb formation is actually spooning. <laughs> yes, it's called spooning under onions. What you're gonna do is dig out the surrounding soil and leave a gap essentially between the bulb and the soil surface and allow the bulb to grow into that space. This is really important because this is essentially the equivalent of loose soil. Absence of soil is loose soil. Well, this is a great way to help with that. And last tip is full sunshine. I always used to think that onions could be grown anywhere, but last year I planted onions literally in every spare inch of my garden. And the onions in full sun were about twice the size of those that were in shade or part shade. Now this comes down to, again, the photosynthesis, the upper biomass, and you name it. I think I could probably blame some of the reason for the part shade ones being a little lower in biomass on the fact that my husband liked eating the green tops as he walked out to a shop and that garden's right in that space so maybe that accounts for some of the reason why those bulbs were smaller but ultimately sun is a big factor these are commonly touted as something that can be grown in low light and while they can be grown in low light the best results are found in full sun they can also be grown in containers so that is something to keep in mind if you don't have a ton of full sun in your area a container and then mobilizing that container based on where the sun is may be the key to you growing onions in your home now, many will argue that onions are cheaper to buy at the grocery store and they are very inexpensive but if you've ever eaten an onion grown in your garden you will be absolutely blown away by the flavor not only that but they tend to be kind of the holy grail when you grow a bigger onion because they are difficult for even just some master gardeners to be able to achieve so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did of course as always be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and leave a comment down below on all your onion growing tips it greatly helps the channel i will talk to you guys next time bye